So we're back on the red couch and this time we're talking about helmets, goggles, sunglasses, hats, caps, beanies, all that kind of stuff for backcountry skiing. So let's dive in. So welcome back to my channel and this is a video that I've been wanting to do for a little while. I think it's an interesting subject really because people don't really pay that much attention to it. You know, they're more interested in skis, boots and bindings. And I think actually getting your systems dialed with your helmet and your sunglasses and goggles can actually lead to a lot more comfort and a lot more enjoyment when you're out skiing, backcountry skiing, off-piece skiing, whatever you want to call it. So full disclosure, I do work with Rab, Smith and Petzl. So a lot of the products that we're talking about in this video are from those manufacturers. So the first thing we should talk about really is helmets. And I basically ski with a helmet all of the time. The exception is I don't wear it when I'm ski touring uphill. And the rest of the time, any downhill skiing, I'm wearing a helmet of some description. I know there's a lot of people out there that don't like wearing helmets for various reasons. And that's fine, that's you know their prerogative. But I do actually think that wearing a helmet is better on quite a few levels. A, I think it's safer. B, it keeps your goggles kind of fresher and cleaner sometimes when you're, you know, storm skiing. And also you can actually get a little bit more warmth out of having a helmet on. So I've got three very different helmets here, and we're gonna talk about how they fit in with the skiing that I do. This is the Smith level, and I would say that I wear this helmet very occasionally. It's not something that I like to wear all the time. And the reason for that is I don't like having uh, ear pads over my ears. It can be really handy if you're just going out for a very easy like piece cruise and you don't want to have extra faff of having a hat that can go underneath this. Uh, and having, you know, if it's particularly cold, then this a buff and, you know, some, some goggles over the top is actually going to be quite a lot less faff than the other systems that we're going to talk about in a minute. But yeah, the big downside there is I can't really hear what's going on. And also I would encourage people who are skiing on the piece to think about that as well, because actually you can't really hear if somebody's coming up behind you when you have these big ear pads on. Some of the features like the venting system on the top of the helmet is a good idea, but it does add quite a lot of weight. So for me, when I'm backcountry skiing, ski touring, ski mountaineering, this type of thing is just too big and too heavy. And also it's too warm to wear most of the time. So at the other end of the spectrum, we have this, which is the Petzl Sirocco, which is actually a climbing helmet, and it's not rated for skiing. It's suggested that you can use it for ski touring, but I would say it doesn't really offer you the same level of protection as a proper ski helmet does. However, something's better than nothing, and the real benefit with a helmet like this is it's super lightweight. It's 150 grams, so it really isn't that much to take with you on a long ski mountaineering day. This is what's known as a single impact helmet, so basically it's only gonna withstand one impact before you need to kind of write it off and you need to check it and make sure that you haven't kind of crushed it or crumpled it up, you know, in the back of the car or something as well. So you've got to keep an eye on these helmets and kind of look after them a little bit. But for a helmet where you're actually going to be doing some climbing and then, you know, skiing off the backside, something like this is absolutely perfect. It keeps the weight to that absolute minimum. One thing I would say with a helmet like this, though, is it doesn't integrate super well with a set of goggles. I find that generally if I'm using this, I'm probably only going to be using like sunglasses or big sunglasses, which we're going to talk about later in the video. This is my go-to helmet, it's the Smith Summit. And there's some really awesome features about this helmet that I think make this a really good choice for people who are doing, you know, a mix of inbound skiing and stuff out in the backcountry. First off, this helmet doesn't have any ear pads, which for me is absolutely perfect. I don't have to try and take them off. The helmet weighs about 400 grams, so it's somewhere between those two helmets that I was mentioning before, but it offers a lot more protection for skiing. It's also rated as a climbing helmet, so it gives you that protection should you be climbing up a couloir and a rock hits you on the head, for example. So some of the features that I really like on this helmet is on the side here, it has little elasticated straps like this, and that's really handy for clipping it onto the outside of your bag. You can put a couple of small carabiners on the sort of daisy chain of your rucksack, and you can clip the helmet straight on so you don't need any additional carrying system or way of storing this helmet. It's a really neat and easy way to carry this. 
It's got a flexible boa system at the back here, which means that can fold in out the way. And quite often what I do is I use this space as an extra place to carry, let's say, for example, a spare layer or even my goggles inside of like a goggle bag or something. So having this strap to the outside of the bag, you can actually utilize the space inside the helmet and you know, you're saving that bit of extra space in your bag whilst you're going uphill. So this helmet comes with a little pad like this that fits in the front, which you can easily take out and use the helmet without this. And it has little felt parts on the inside of here. So if you're using it against the skin, it's actually really comfortable and it does work really well with like a beanie as well. This helmet didn't come with any kind of strap here for the goggle system. I was talking to some of the people who are sort of helping design this helmet and the reason for that is, yeah, they feel like the goggle straps that Smith goggles have have a little kind of rubber piece down the side and it stops the goggles from coming off. But I quite like having that and all I did was just tie a simple piece of elastic that went through these two holes and through this hole here and then it's tied up inside. It's just a really neat, simple, light way to, you know, add that extra bit of security for your goggles. If you're like me, a dad, and you like to wear the goggles on the back of your head. That's pretty much everything to think about, about helmets. I would consider thinking about how you're going to carry it in your bag, whether you're going to have it on the outside or if you're going to have a bigger bag that you can put it on the inside. Maybe that bag has a way of actually carrying it because it is really nice to be very efficient when you're doing your changeovers. So let's say you've skied down somewhere and you're going to be you know, ski touring back up to just take the helmet off, stick it on the bag or in the bag, and then, you know, have what's left on your head be what you're going to use to go on the uphill. So let's talk about hats and how that fits in with the helmet. So I have a whole bunch of different options here of kind of headwear that I wear whilst I'm out backcountry skiing. Now, if the temperature is really cold, and I say really cold, I mean really cold for the Alps, which is where I spend most of my time skiing, I'm gonna be wearing a beanie like this, which has got like a fleece liner on the inside, and it's just a, you know, acrylic beanie, basically. I don't like to have any like bobble on the top of my hat or anything, because what I like to be able to do is put my helmet over the top of this, and then, you know, having that on the inside just basically means it's not gonna work. And I also like to have one that's not too long, so when I pull my helmet on, it doesn't kind of like, come down over my eyes you know it's it's just the shape and size of my head so that's for if it's like reasonably cold and then i would add a buff into that uh, you know a neck gaiter and i might have a few different options of this as well so just a super thin one and maybe a slightly thicker one for those really cold days when i put the buff on i make sure that it goes over the top of my hat and that way when i've got my helmet on like this is if I wanted to just pull the buff down out of the way, I can just literally just pull it down and get it out of the way like that. And I have a little bit of a cooler option there. So one thing to think about is making sure that the goggles integrate with us this whole system well. The really nice thing about the Smith helmets and goggles is they work together super well. This Smith helmet actually comes with a really thin kind of skull cap liner. It's like super thin, this thing. Uh, and that works really well. And actually for me, I have to put this pad thing in to make that fit with that thin hat. Uh, so sometimes I use that system, but actually I generally default back to this style hat, or I'll be using a five panel cap like this that I'm gonna wear kind of most of the time when I'm going uphill, when it's like warmer weather, for example. So thinking about the cap that you would want to use, you've got to make sure that you don't have a cap that has one of those little metal tabs that sits on the top of it. Because if you have that on top of your head, then you're going to get that kind of being pressed into the top of your head by the helmet and it's just not going to be very comfortable. And I find that actually this design of like five panel cap, which is it's called the classics by Yupong and these are like super cheap. You can get these, I think for about $12, 12, 15 euros, whatever it is. So this is just a lighter version, which has kind of mesh on the side. And I might use that more when it's like really warm in the springtime. So it's a little bit more breathable, but I really like to have a cap on when I'm ski touring. I like to stay out of the sun as much as I can. And I might have a base layer that has a hood on it which I spoke about in another video before, which was how to clothe for backcountry skiing. So you can check that out there. And that hood would just sit over the top of that and just give me some sun protection on my neck and ears. And, and then I can just have maybe my buff up to here as well. And then sunglasses and, you know, I basically don't have any skin exposed. So the next thing to talk about would be goggles. And I basically use two different models from Smith. 
This is the 4D Mag, and the really nice thing about the Mag design goggles from Smith is they're super easy to change the lenses. There's a couple of little tabs here, and basically the lenses just pop out and, and back on again. So you can change between kind of a category three plus lens like this and a low light lens. So that's really good on days where you're kind of chopping in in and out of like sunshine and shadow. These lenses are quite nice. They bend down this way so you can see a little bit more about kind of what's going on in front of your skis. The fit of goggles is very specific to you. So I would suggest, you know, trying out a whole bunch of different goggles, but these seem to work really well. And yeah, I find them nice and comfortable. I like that these goggles have a split design at the back here. That works really well when you have like certain designs of helmet that have little elastic or something that you need to thread it through. This works really well and it works with my little improvised system on the Summit helmet as well. The other goggles that I use are the Squad Mag and again these are really easy to change the lenses out on. Uh, not really much to say about these, just a slightly different shape but yeah I really like these goggles. I don't have any problems with them fogging up. I really like that the straps have good like silicon strips on them that stop the goggles from kind of like moving around on your head. So yeah really good quality goggles and I like those a lot. All Smith goggles come with one of these goggle socks and these are actually incredibly handy and I basically try and make sure I've always got one of these with me at all times because that's a really good thing to stop you from getting those little scratches on the goggle lenses which are really super annoying. It's so quick and easy to just take it off when you're stepping out of a gondola and it's super quick and easy just to stick it on there and protect those goggles in case somebody's kind of like waving their poles around or doing something kind of crazy and also that just works really well I can stick that inside my hat and put that in there and I can just strap that to the outside of my bag and it's just a way to like kind of have that stuff stored whilst I'm ski touring up in this and once that's all sweaty because I've been ski touring up for a little while I can then change into like a dry hat and a pair of dry goggles. So the next thing to talk about is sunglasses and then I'm going to talk about how this stuff kind of integrates and what I generally default to at certain times of the year and how you can like best do your system. So I use kind of two different pairs of sunglasses both from Smith. These are the Smith Wildcats. They're nice and big sunglasses. I do like that. This is a category three lens so it's I think it's about 11% light transmission. Anything less than 10% is category four so it's just on the cusp of being a category four so they're quite a strong category three and I find that works pretty well a lot of the time uh, and they're nice and light and quite simple and you can also change the lenses on these for clear lenses so you can use these for like mountain biking in the summer as well. I wear these for like summer alpine climbing as well, for paragliding. I basically wear these quite a lot. Uh, they're my sort of favorite sunglasses at the moment. This season I'm really stoked to be using the new Pursuit sunglasses which come in this awesome little stash bag which I think is really cool and neat. So these come with a little nose piece which I probably will be using quite a lot on these sunglasses and they also come with a little Krogi as well which clips in directly into the legs which I think is a great feature to have. It's nice that it's very easy to take on and off. So when you take the sunglasses out of the pouch you have to flip the legs out and then you flip the wings out like that and that's going to give you extra protection on the side these lenses are category one to four. The arms of these sunglasses are moldable. Now be very careful if you do that and don't come to me saying that you snap them if you make a mistake. But I did just do this without doing anything weird and heating them up. I just very carefully bent them and shaped them to the shape of my ears and my head. So it is possible to do that but just be very careful if you do do it and you can also get a specialized dealer to do it for you. Very nice having the category one to four which means that I can kind of have these on in the lift station and walk outside and they're going to change within a few minutes and I find that's going to help me spend less time faffing around when I'm coming out of the Agri de Midi for example and trying to run down the Aret and get somewhere for the day. So how does this stuff all kind of integrate and how can we kind of faff around a little bit less when we're actually out in the mountains? So I'll talk about a system that I use in the springtime a little bit which is basically keeping this cap on at all times and the cap goes on and I'm using the buff uh, as my layer of warmth over my ears if they're getting a little bit cold when I'm downhill skiing for example. So 
buff goes over like that. So whether I'm using this helmet from Petzl or this helmet from Smith, depending what I'm doing, same sort of system. This is going to go over like this and I'm making sure that it's like right down against the peak there and clip that strap up like that. And then sunglasses just go on. And basically that's me for the whole day, more or less, unless I'm going uphill where I basically just take off the helmet and put that in the bag. And then if I get a little bit hot, pull the buff down, you know, you're just changing between those different things and it doesn't take much time to kind of like figure that out. Just need to make sure that everything fits and works together well. So when you're trying on helmets in the shop, take the hat that you want to be wearing, take the buff that you're using, take the sunglasses and just spend a bit of time making sure it all works together and it fits well because what you don't want to end up is having a helmet that's too tight and it's giving you like a little bit of a headache for example so yeah same sort of thing with this petzl helmet that's going to go over there like that uh, and i use this kind of setup quite a lot during the summer as well um, i have my like cap underneath and then yeah sunglasses on and yeah i just find that that's like a neat easy way of doing it it gives me protection from the sun gives me a little bit of warmth on my head but yeah I can kind of chop between those two different systems with those helmets for sort of slightly warmer conditions so when it's a bit colder in the winter I have like a helmet like this on and that's just literally going to go underneath this helmet like that and then the goggles are going to go on the outside of everything I don't put the goggles underneath the helmet at all I don't really like that. Uh, yeah, super easy. They can go up onto the head. I can put a goggle sock over the top of those. And that just gives those a little bit more protection. So not really much more to say about that subject. Hopefully you found that video useful. If you did find that video useful, then make sure you give it a thumbs up. And one useful thing you can do for me, which is completely free, is go down there, hit the subscribe button and also hit the bell. So you're going to get notified when I post a new video. And that way you're not going to miss one of these videos in the future. So thanks very much for watching and I will see you next time. Cheers, guys.